Hey, it's Mr. R, and we've been working with writing and solving some exponential functions. And just as a reminder, we've used the growth and decay formulas for population, and we're getting ready to use one for radioactive decay, I believe. So, on to our next example. It says a certain substance has a half-life of 250 years. Write the function calculating the amount of material left after so many years. Uh, find and then find the amount of a 100 gram substance left uh, after a hundred years okay uh, so it may not seem like there's a whole lot of information given here but it tells you you have a half-life of 250 years so let's write down our um, decay formula which is a of t equals a sub 0 times little a or 8 raised to the t. And let's talk about what we have here and what we don't have. Okay. So what we have here is we have a time of 250 years and what it tells us is it cuts this in uh, the amount we have um, in half. Ooh. So time 250 years for half-life. Now in the scenario they start with they don't tell us how much material we have. I mean, they do give us a question later where we have 100 grams, but uh, we don't have that in the first sentence. We could use that 100 grams if we like, um, but even though they don't give us a starting or ending amount, the fact that they say it takes 200 years to cut this in half, we can just use that information. We can say that we can start with one gram in this case, a starting amount of one and end with a half. Technically we could start with 50 and end with 25. We could start with 100 and end with 50. It doesn't really matter as long as we cut it in half over that time. And the time that we're going to use is 250. So we have something similar to the population <coughs> function that we did a moment ago where we have one half 0.5 equals a to the 250. And let me write it where there's more room in there for what we're going to do. So 1 half 0.5 equals a to the 250. And we talked about we can take the 250th root of this thing to get a by itself. So we have to do that on both sides. So if we do that, we will round to, let's just say, four decimal places again. But we're going to take the 250th root of 0.5, or one half, however you like it. So I'm on my calculator, and I said I would go to four decimal places, and if I do that, I'll have 0.9972. So anytime you see a problem, it should tell you how many decimal places to work if you're looking for an answer. Um, if it doesn't, um, assume four or more probably. Okay, so with this we have four decimal places. So let's continue on. And let's say, let's answer the second question here. Well, let's first of all write our function. A of t equals 100, if that's what we're going to start with, times 0.9972 raised to, in this case, um, 100. So that's the function that we're going to calculate. So starting with the 100 grams, the rate at which it's changing 0.9972 and for over 100 year period of time. So this is going to give me, let's calculate, Started with 100 grams, there is 75.55 grams left after 100 years. Okay, so let's do a, another example here. <clears throat> it says a bacteria triples every seven hours, write a function that ca uh, calculates the amount of bacteria present after so many hours. So, um, bacteria is a population if we want to look at it that way. 
So we can use the P of T formula. P of T equals P sub zero times A to the T. And in this case, we know that it's seven hours to triple. So similar to the half-life, we're not given a specific amount, but we're told how the starting amount and the ending amount relate to each other. So we can start with one little old bacteria, and we can have it end at three bacteria if we want to talk about tripling. And we don't know the rate, but it says it would take seven hours to do that. So basically what we have is a to the seven equals three, so we're going to take the seventh root of both sides. So I have no idea what the seventh root of three is. So I'm going to pick up my calculator. And once again, you want to make sure you're getting these numbers, not that you're just watching. Um, but if you can't get these numbers, we need to have a talk. Uh, 1.1699. That's a decimal. So the actual function that we're writing is P of T equals however many it starts with. Uh, so we'll just leave that at P naught times 1.1699 um, to the T. So we have the rate. So if somebody said, well, I'm starting with 50 bacteria and I'm going to let it grow for 12 hours. You could plug in the 50 and the 12 and figure out how much it would be after those 12 hours. All right, last example for this video. Jim mixes 450 liters of radioactive material, which decays to 420 liters in two months. So pay attention to that. We're talking about months here. Uh, so it says write a function calculating the amount of material left after so many months. So we're headed toward the direction of having, well, the formula we're working with is A of T equals the starting amount A times A to the T. And we're looking at finding all the parts that we can plug in there that would uh, help us out. So regardless it looks like the starting amount is going to be 450 liters and the ending amount here after two months is going to be 420 so we could set up our formula and we could have 420 as the ending amount equals 450 the starting amount we don't know the a but we know it takes two months to do that so we're going to have to divide both sides by that 450 to start trying to get things by themselves. So let's see. I don't think that's a great number. Um, I could keep it as a fraction if I like, but let's just go ahead and round at 0.9333 is about um, a squared for two months. So that's nice. We got to take a square root. How often do we get to do that? So I am going to retype this, so let's see. The number I'm getting back out of that would be 0.9661. So when I come and write the formula so Jim can predict how much he'll have left after so many months, it will be A of T equals his starting amount of 450 times the rate 0.9661 to the t. So if I plug 2 in for t, I should get something relatively close to 420, maybe not exactly since I rounded. Um, but if I wanted to know how much I'd have at the end of the year, I'd plug in 12. So make sure you understand here that t is in months. So if they just came back and asked you a question, what will we have after five years? Don't plug in five. Um, since the way we calculated it, we did it in months. So we just need to be consistent there. All right. We'll do some other type of problems in a little bit.